And welcome back to Flexible Games Fortress Craft modding tutorial. So the main mod that I'm going to be covering in this tutorial is the creation of my nuclear reactor mod. It's a brand new mod that I am working on. I want to get out. It's a complex system. Um, here is a general overview of how this is going to look. Um, we're gonna, it's a mod that's going to rely on the frozen factory content for the advanced materials. So I'm gonna be taking chromium and molybdenum, creating a composite alloy, which then is used to make an empty fuel rod. I'm gonna have uranium, which is already in the game, but right now there's nothing to mine it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add my own trencher uh, head and motor in order to mine uranium and only uranium and the uranium is going to get processed and it's going to be turned into yellow cake using some chlorine and a ratio of ore to chlorine to make yellow cake which is then spun in a centrifuge to make uranium dioxide that combined uh, a few of those combined with empty fuel rods will make the primed fuel rod which is used in the nuclear reactor um, using compressed freeze-on as a cooling agent and a catalyst for the reaction itself. It's going to generate a substantial amount of power and it will just be phenomenal because you'll be able to build it anywhere. So you'll be able to have one of these on the surface powering you know a resin uh, farm or something your your entire base it's going to be it's going to produce you know almost 10 times the power that a geothermal produces um, so the first step with this is all of the xml's need to be set up prior to uh, basically jumping into code because you really want to know what the names of your blocks are going to be and, and uh, you know how you're going to do the config and all of that so you want to lay it out you want to get an idea of what you're going to need and this actually uses a substantial number of machines and uh, both custom made and generic auto crafters so in here you can see I've got set up now all of the XML's for this mod ready to go ready to be used in code and let's start with the generic auto crafters. So any time you add a generic auto crafter, you want to append it with your author ID. So again, your author ID is very, very important. So the composite alloy smelter obviously is based off the steel smelter. So it's the same spawn object, the mini smelter object, but my value is my smelter and the game will you know, spit an error if you try to um, do something funny with that or use the same block. So the key here, the recipe key, composite alloy, it's crafting this composite alloy. And if we look back a directory, we see items. And items is the area that you define all of your own custom items. So you can see here the key is my composite alloy, which links to this. So this recipe for this machine will make this new item. Similarly, all the other items, the empty fuel rods, the yellow cake, the uranium dioxide, and the prime fuel rod are all in here because I have to add those items in order for the game to know that we actually craft them. Now, the manufacturing recipes right now are temporary, but this is um, temporary by mean of I just have snow as the craft cost so I can go in and test as I'm coding this without having to, you know, process a huge tech tree in order to do that. So the, the craft cost, the recipes will be probably one of the final things that you uh, do in your mod in order to add some difficulty to it. So here we can see uh, basically the trencher motor, uranium trencher head, the centrifuge, the reactor. Now these are all labeled placements. And what's important is these are multi-blocks. Anything you see with placement 
is a multi-block and that is adds some level of complexity into your your builds the rest of these are the um the uh generic auto crafters that uh, you need recipes for and it looks like i might have missed one nope there it is so there's the composite alloy smelter the fuel rod crafter the yellow cake processor and the primed fuel rod crafter um, all of those are in here with the same file name and with the same key now moving on we've covered items uh, we've covered manufacturing recipes. Now let's look at recipe sets. A custom recipe set here is for my centrifuge. And this enables you to have a specific recipe set for a specific machine, sort of like the blast furnace has in the vanilla game. So this is uh, flexible games centrifuge recipes. It's labeled centrifuge. And the machine key it's associated with is the flexiblegames.centrifuge. And if we look at that recipe set right here, you can see the ratios I have set up. It's going to cre create one uranium dioxide right here, one uranium dioxide for 40 yellow cake. And I'm going to set up in the game all of the crafting power requirements and all of that in the machine and because i'm a nice guy i have all of those values in a config file all ready to go and load it and to be loaded up in the game and used so if we look at my config file this is not anything to do with fortress craft itself this is special to my mods where i use config files for all of my things so you can see the mark II uh, excavator has a config the advanced queries has two configs in matter of fact so it's just i i like to add configs to give people a little extra leeway so if we look at the reactor config you can see in here i have all of the configuration for the entire mod set up in here and this way i can tweak the values uh, to balance it or other people can tweak them to their liking if they want to go total cheat mode they can do that if they choose so that covers recipe sets now we can go into research no I don't want to scan it I want to edit so if we look at research right now again I am just doing a debug situation um, and and you know I'll redo the comments or redo the, the the requirements later on when the mod is more final but this adds flexible games dot nuclear power as the key for the research so this adds a new research if you wanted to adjust an old research obviously you would use the is override and then you would tweak whatever you wanted in here as per the instructions in the pdf file so this uh, basically gives you the description and sets the requirements both scan and project requirements and if we go in to our items you can see I have the research requirements set to that same key so all of these are going to be kind of gated behind that research and you can do the same stuff here research requirements so their recipes and your items are gated behind whatever research you may want to add and the last thing on here is the terrain data this is for blocks that you can place in the world and also any generic auto crafters that you have and because these are multi-blocks these have to use the cube type of 600. So I had to use an override tag. And now I'm not overriding any vanilla values. I am merely adding new value entries to the list. And that way, and I think I might have a mistake here. I think I might want to eliminate these 
tags in here because these new value entries should be good. I'll have to double check that. But these new values add these placement blocks for the multi-block because the multi-block is a very unique structure that takes a lot of separate blocks and combines them um, and has a lot of extra code involved. But our other items are the generic auto crafters um, and our regular objects. So if we look, we have uranium trencher motor, but we have a uranium trencher motor placement. This is the multi-block kind of generic block that we're gonna use that is bound in the game to the multi-block code. The motor itself is going to have a block and a center. Now I have to do a little bit of work to see if I really need both of these. I might be able to eliminate the block itself um, and just use the center or use the block and don't use the center because I can just detect where the center of the object is and use that block. Um, but the pick replacement has to be set to your placement value. So when you destroy, when you break the multi-block, it will break down into these blocks here. So I have one of those for every multi-block, uranium trencher head, um, and here's the centrifuge, and here's the reactor. So these, the last item on here is the generic assembler machine. And again, this has to override because there's just one key that's a generic assembler machine that has multiple values. So I do the is override command and override and add my own values to this, which are then processed in the game, given their own IDs, and I can pull those out in code in order to make sure they are properly done. So this sets all of the keys, names, descriptions. The icon name is kind of what comes up in the UI. There's um, a way to uh, make that your make that your own icon by putting a file name in there, but I'm not worried about that right now. I just want to get the mod in its own uh, get the mod working first before I worry about some of the icons and stuff. So that is the overview of the mod and all of the little files that it takes to get the game loading everything that you need. Now, code wise, we've covered um all of the xml stuff now when we get into code uh, you want to set up your project in a certain way and i will show that now and then come back and show you how to start individualizing the mod itself to start the plugin in visual studio go to new project class library Name it, whatever your author ID is, dot, the, the mod name. Here we're doing the nuclear reactor. Create a directory for, for the solution, and it will generate all of the required elements. First, go into project, add reference. Now, this is important. You want to reference the FortressCraft Assembly C Sharp dot DLL and the unity engine.dll if these are not already in your list you can go to browse find them and they're pretty easy to find it's you just go to your steam your steam apps common fortress craft and let's extend this here fortress craft fc64 data managed and the assembly c sharp is in there and everything is good now, it starts off as saying class one. So we can include the Unity Engine um, namespace. The Fortress Craft stuff doesn't need to be included. It's already included on its own. But we want to get rid of the class as saying class one. We want to rename that something a little better. So first things first, we need to append, prepend, the assembly names with plugin underscore. 
That's the only way the game will load in our DLL file. So pretty simple way of just making sure it's going to compile into the proper file name. So if we want to rename class one, we actually just go to class one.cs and then rename and we're going to name it nuclear reactor mod. And that will ask us to rename everything which we want. And there we go. We are started. Now the, you also want to take out the namespace. So after you've set all of the project uh, requirements at references and the assembler, the assembly name, you want to create your mod, get rid of your namespace, and you want to take it off of Fortress Craft Mod. So it's going to be a Fortress Craft Mod, and what this does is it adds a bunch of requirements to your class, which we will get to in a future video. So that'll do it for this episode, and I thank you for watching, and I will see you next time.